Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Particular Harbor. Uh, I, my name is Mike, my pronouns are he, him, and I will be facilitating this game for uh, the Shared Hearth online convention for Open Hearth Gaming. Um, I've got two wonderful players here. Uh, let's just go around and uh, tell us your names and pronouns, and um, what, if, what and you know, if you want to say a little bit about your uh, experience with Open Hearth Gaming and or um, Firebrands games in general, please do. Uh, Andrea, why don't we start with you? Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Andrea, she, her pronouns, and I don't care how you pronounce my name, <laughs> just spell it right. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm very happy to be playing this open hearth and uh, pack my weekend full of games uh, and uh, not uh, would only facilitate one of them. And I have played many, many Firebrands games because I like them a lot. And I wrote one uh, myself called Miss Bernberg's Finishing School for Young Ladies, which is very different than uh, uh, one particular harbor. And I'm very excited to finally play this one because I've been wanting to do that for a long time. So over to you, Julie. Hi, I'm Julie. She, her. Uh, I've been when Open Hearth gaming since the changeover from the previous name uh and i was that with them for like i don't know since before the pandemic uh i played firebrands and firebrands offshoots a few times so i'm familiar enough i facilitated a game of it once so you know it's fun and i love swashbuckling pirates and stuff so and uh, like I said, my name is Mike. My pronouns are he, him. Um, I have been playing with Open Hearth Gaming and its precursor organization since I think I joined in 2018, maybe late 2017. I forget. It's been a while. Time has no meaning since the pandemic. Um, I've been playing tabletop games for a long time. Um, I've facilitated um, the original Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands a, a few times, and I've played, um, I think the only other Firebrands game I've played was Once More Into the Void. Um, I think that was kind of like a, a, a much earlier version than the one that uh, was, was just published. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting, getting, our pirate, getting, our, getting our pirates on with, uh, with this one. Um, okay, so. Let's, um, before we get started, I do want to just do some housekeeping stuff here. So first and foremost, um, I want to go through a little, um, a little exercise called CATS. Um, that's, that's what we can do to make sure we're all here to play the same game. CATS stands for concept, aim, tone, and subject matter, and it's sort of the elevator pitch of the game. So One Particular Harbor is a GM-less, diceless story game about the lives of the native merfolk and foreign sailors uh, in and around an archipelago of disputed islands in a fantasy Age of Sail setting. The aim of this game is to learn about our characters and to create messy entanglements between them. Fall in love with your enemies, ally with your rivals, fight your friends. Uh, the tone of this game uh, that I'd like to go for would be melodramatic action, uh, carefree romance, suspense. Um, we're going for a, a, a piratical action adventure movie tone. Um, so like a Pirates of the Caribbean movie is kind of the, kind of the general tone I want to go for. Um, if this were a movie, it'd probably be rated PG-13. So I don't want to get too graphic. I don't want to get super violent. I don't want to get into... I mean, we'll ha we're going to have some moral dilemmas, but I don't want it. I, I don't want it. You know, I don't want this to get like too in the gray. Um, so yeah, I think I want to. I want to try to keep this light. You know, light breezy action adventure. As for the subject matters of this game, um, this is a game that deals with issues of colonialism uh, and imperialism. We've got a foreign navy that's come in. Uh, there's a native. There's a native population that lives here um that's dealing with two other foreign factions that have shown up um you know there's uh so there's there's some issues of na native rights that may come up um piracy is going to come up this is a pirates game and pirates steal stuff so we're gonna possibly deal with that um naval warfare may be a thing we may have there's uh one of the 
one of the possibilities is like a big sea battle. So we could conceivably have ships firing broadside, cannon broadsides at each other. So that, that's a possibility. Um, there's the ocean. So we could deal with storms. We could deal with, um, we could deal with being marooned on an island. We could deal with drowning. You know, the ocean is, uh, you know, the ocean can be a, can be a scary place. Um, and the and the interpersonal things, um, you know, we're going to deal with. Um, you know, we'll be making and breaking alliances. Uh, there'll be betrayal. There may be some intra-party conflict. This isn't really a party-based game like D and D, where uh, each of the players is going to be playing a character from a different faction, and there are three factions, and we'll talk about that in a moment. That's the concept, aim, tone, tone or subject matter. Any any questions before we move on? Okay. Yeah. So uh, the other thing, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is emotional safety at the table. Um, we are playing this game with a set of nested safety tools. Um, each of us individually is more important than this game we're playing. Um, each of us is bringing to the table a different set of life experiences, um, a different set of biases, and a different set of you know of, of opinions on how things on how things should be. Um, what may be perfectly fine for you to talk about, I may not want to deal with in a game setting. Um, we're going to be using a set of safety tools. Uh, some are reactive, some are proactive. Um, and that's that's going to basically allow us to focus on the fun and put the things that we know we don't really want to deal with aside so we don't play with them. Um, so the the three safety tools we're, we're going to be working with um, the first is uh, called the open door policy, and that's about our individual personal comfort. Um, open door just means we are all free to come and go as we please from this game. Um, if anything comes, you know, real life takes precedence. If someone is, you know, if a delivery man is knocking at your door for your latest Amazon delivery, please pause, go take care of that. You know, if your dog has knocked over, if your dog has jumped on the table and knocked over a vase of flowers, please pause, take care of that. If nature calls, or you need a drink, or you're, or we've had a, an intense scene, and you need to step away to like collect your thoughts, step away. Uh, if you decide that this game is not for you, and you'd rather do something else, um, you are all of us are empowered to say all of us are empowered to leave the game. Um, I do ask the courtesy if you are intending to leave and not come back, please please let us know that you, you're not planning to come back. That is open. To, oh, and any of us can call a can call a break at any time. Any questions on open door? Okay, uh, I, I mentioned breaks and open door. I'm just going to say I'm probably going to call for breaks at uh, pretty much. I generally call them at the top of the hour. We got a bit of a late start today, so I'll probably just kind of. I, I figure we'll just probably go like once once we've once we've established our characters and maybe had a once we've gone over safety, established our characters, and maybe ha and maybe played a solitaire scene, uh, played an open solitaire scene. Maybe we'll take our first break after that. The next set of tools we're going to be using is called Lines and Veils. Um, this is a proactive safety tool that allows us to mark subjects that we don't want to go with. If a subject is lined, that means it's not going to it's not going to happen in the game. I'm not going to bring it up. You're not going to bring it up. It's just not going to be there. If a subject is veiled, that means we can acknowledge that this thing exists. We may see reports of this sort of thing. We may hear rumors of it. Um, you know, we can talk about this sort of thing happening, but it's not going to happen on camera and it's not going to happen to the to the players. If we are approaching a veiled subject, we'll not dwell on it, we'll cut away. Um, you know, it'll just be, you know, it'll be a report, it won't be a scene. Um, so we're gonna treat we're gonna treat that very, very carefully. Um there's also an ask first category, which means uh, you may be okay with the subject in some situations and not so in others. Um, if we are approaching a subject that is asked first, we're going to pause. We'll just pause play, have a little out of character discussion, see what bounds we want to we want to put around that, and then then we'll go forward. Um, one thing that I've been doing with games recently is sometimes games have sometimes games like the text of the game is. A, is something that can be fly, that is off that is some that shows up on lines and veils lists. Um, it's called inherent, and that means this is this is something that's kind of core to the game, and we really can't effectively we can't really line it. 
Um, and veiling it may change the way the game plays. So I want to call that out. If, if uh, you don't want to deal with the subject that is inherent to the game, maybe this game just isn't for you. Um, I've got two things on the inherent list uh, for this game, and that is one is colonialism and imperialism, and the other is inter-party conflict. Those are kind. Those are the latter is inherent to Firebrand's games, and the former is inherent to a game about pirates in a pirates and a navy in a, dis, in a disputed territory that already had a native population. So I'm going to pause the recording here. So if we want to talk about lines and veils a little bit, uh, we can do that off camera. And we're back. Uh, we have established a set of lines and veils that we will uh, that we will treat accordingly. The third uh, the third safety tool that we're going to be using is a reactive tool called the X card. Um, with the X card, uh, if you invoke the X card, that just means we're going. The game is going into a place where you're not feeling comfortable. Um, and when you invoke the X card, that's telling us that we need to pause the game. Um, and have an out-of-character discussion about what we what we need to change. Um, to invoke the X card, say the word, you know, say X card. You can, or on, if you're on camera, you can make an X gesture. Um, you could put a note in the in the Zoom chat. Might be better to say something because uh, sometimes I miss things that are on the Zoom chat. Um, when you invoke the X card, um, we're going to pause the game. We're going to have an out-of-character discussion to find out what needs to change um, and how we're going to change it. Don't have to explain why you need to change it. We just need we just need to know what needs to be changed, um, and we'll either you know rewind the scene and replay it. Uh, we may just cut the scene there and jump to the next one. Um, you know we may like you know rewind rewind a few lines of dialogue um, or whatever whatever needs to be done. It is okay to X card just about anything. Like if I introduced a character that was the name of the bully that used to beat you up when you were in when you're in sixth grade and you absolutely hate that name, X card it. Um, you know, that character doesn't really exist and we doesn't really care what we call them. Um, also, it's it's also perfectly fine to X card, to invoke the X card if things are happening uh, above the table, or I'm sorry, above the, at the table level. Um, if someone is regularly like mispronouncing your name or misgendering you or talking over you or telling you how to play your character, Please invoke the X card. We'll have an we'll have an out of character discussion to address that behavior as well. Um, the other thing I like to mention about the X card is if something happened, you if something happened you didn't really like all that much, uh, you decided to just go with it and not X card it, and it happens again, it is absolutely fine to X card something that's previously happened um, if it if it comes up again, and so. That's uh, that. That's X card in a nutshell. Any questions on that? No. All but, right. Uh, since you since you mentioned uh, interrupting people, I sometimes do that because sometimes my mouth is quicker than my brain, and I never mean to take away the word from someone. So please feel free to direct redirect to the person I interrupted just because I interject with a with a, with a suggestion or an idea. And it's usually just a sign of enthusiasm and engagement, and it's not meant to shut anyone down, uh, unless I explicitly tell you to shut that down um, as part of, like, uh, you know, xing something myself. So, um, yeah, I try to keep that in mind, but sometimes, like, it just happens, and I want people to be aware that I don't mean it to um, interrupt them from contributing. Understood, and thanks for bringing that up. That's other well, that that's uh, that's a good segue to one other thing. I did want to mention about the X card. Um, if anyone notices that we are that in our enthusiasm of play, we are going toward a line or a veil, please invoke the X card. Um, I wish I could say I have never violated a, a line or a veil, but sometimes in one's enthusiasm of play, you take your eye, you take your eye off the list, and you know, you take your eye off the list and you, you go somewhere we shouldn't have. So if anyone notices we're going in that direction, please invoke the X card so we can sort of like, you know, write the ship and send it in the proper direction. This isn't exactly a safety tool, but if something were to happen to me as the facilitator and host of this meeting, um, like an internet, like an internet interruption or a power failure, or I look concernedly to my left, take my headset off and walk off camera, 
and I don't come back for 10 minutes, uh, assume something has happened to me and that the game is over and that you have the rest of your the, the rest of the game time to yourself. Um, if does something if that does happen, I'll do my best to contact you via some other means. But again, I wish I could say that has never happened before, but um, in the past couple of years, my neighborhood has been subject to power failures, which is weird because I've lived here for more than 20 years and it's only recently started happening and I don't know why, but yeah. it happens. Yeah. It is a way of open dooring, even if yep. it's involuntary. <laughs> there is that. But yeah, if, if I like, if I, you know, suddenly I'm not here and I'm not back for 10 minutes, assume the game is over. Okay, then let's talk about the game. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to uh, read a passage that's straight from the book to uh, get, sort of get ourselves into the into the headspace here. Um, the Isles of Karkatu have no owner. In the heart of the South Delam Sea, a hundred leagues from the nearest sovereign power, rests the Isles of Karkatu. No kingdom has claimed Karkatu since it rose from the sea nearly 1,500 years ago. Its treasures from time immemorial lie largely unclaimed to this day. That's not to say that Karkatu is uninhabited. Roving clans of merfolk act as guardians and custodians, never claiming the isles for themselves. These merfolk can trade their fins for legs to better keep the islands at peace and must be wary to return to the water by midnight, lest they lose their fins forever. Within the last decade, pirates have found their way to the main island, also called Karkatu. It is a modest port, complete with taverns and a bazaar. The town acts as a refuge for pirates from the open waters for weeks at a time. Though no pirate names Karkatu home, they understand this is a place of peace and rest. Through this, a tenuous peace was garnered between the pirates and the clans of merfolk. Until the Queen's Navy arrived. These sailors hail from the nearby Burkath Keys, sailing forth on the behest of Queen Nicoletta, Nicoletta who, claims these islands, who claims that these islands belong to her by right of proximity. Her navy is comprised of contractual crews uh, filled with highly skilled and, and, and fiery loyal sailors, promised lavish rewards on their return should their maps bear knowledge of new lands of their uh, or their ships holds burdened with treasure. The Queen's Navy are honor bound by the Queen's laws, holding each other accountable while far from home. This motivates a disdain for the pirates of, the, of Kartkatu, who are as lawless as they are in the ways of the Queen's claim to the, to the Isles. Ridding Kartkatu of piracy stirs not only the pirates to conflict, but also the merfolk who swore long ago to keep these Isles free from conflict, by force if necessary. As such, there is no conflict, officially, but tensions, are, uh, but tensions are heating to fever pitch with each faction vying for position and Karkatu's ancient treasures, boiling over to beef, brief bouts of open conflict. Though at times one group may appear to hold advantage, nothing more than a, than a stalemate has been maintained since the sailors arrived, with no one willing to compromise or, to, or, or give up what they claim is theirs. So there are three factions in this game, uh, the Merfolk, the Pirates, and the Queen's Navy. Uh, before the game started, we had a little out of, we had a little discussion as to who was interested in playing what faction. Um, so uh, let's go around and uh, let's go around and say what, what factions people want, what faction people wants to play. And then we'll, then we'll start figuring, figuring out about our characters. Um, Jillian, would you like to start? I'm representing the right and honorable Queen's Navy. Yeah, I will be one of the merfolk. And I will play one of the pirates. So if you want to click over to the, to the characters tab, um, there's not a whole lot to character generation. Um, Basically, like pick a name, pick a name for your character. Uh, let us know their pronouns. Uh, pick a faction. We've already decided that. And um, then you, uh, then there's a pick list. You choose three traits that describe your character. Um, and then, depending on which faction you're with, you've got a couple of other choices to make. So I'm gonna give folks a little bit of time to figure that out.
Well, maybe this this is a good time to to ask my question from from before. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, since we do have Merfolk, uh, it's kind of kind of already implied that this is not a quite a realistic setting. But do we want to have like um, explicit magic or like mer powers that are some some sort of some kind of magical in effect? Or do we want to just say this is a different kind of person and they just a different species and that's that? Uh, excellent question. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm open. I'm open to whatever via via world building. My, um, my, go on, Jolene. I'm pro magic, but like not like it's out and wild in the open. Sort of like in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, where like it exists, it's not common, and yeah, people are like, good "Whoa, to me. yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's exactly what I was going to say." Is let's let's play like in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, where there is magic in the world, and people understand that there is magic in the world, but yeah. you know, you're not going to have like a fifth level wizard casting fireball at the uh, at the opposing ship's yeah. sails because you know this ain't like D and D favorite one of the movies the fifth one where there's that science lady that doesn't believe in magic and then she's like well i can't deny it now i've just yeah the the ocean literally parted what am i gonna do yeah yeah so cool. yeah i i think it's so yeah i think that's i think that's fun we've got you know we've we've got we've got mare folk who can magically like yeah. transform their their like fishtail yeah. in, into a pair of legs to walk around so clearly there's some sort of magic in the world yeah. so yeah let's let's keep it you know let's there's let's weird keep it... artifacts but like you know they're not yeah. like blatant yeah it's like a compass that never points north you know yeah and do you know? humans like have like any kind of innate magic as well or because in my mind like the merfolk must have some sort of innate magic maybe not all to the same degree and do humans also innate, have their own magic or but do there's they need probably some like rituals items? that certain people study that that's kind of the way I was going. I, I was thinking as well. Yeah, it's not. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think humans have innate magic, but I think you know maybe there are some scholars that can learn that sort of thing. Yeah, it's a learned um, thing. Yeah. You know, it's sense. like uh, you know, it's like magic. Uh, it's not like it's not like D and D magic. Uh, there yeah, are no sorcerers, like, but yeah, you know, cards and all that. You know, there's there's no like sorcerers or like you know priests don't call down miracles from God. Um, but yeah, there's you know there's there's like weird scholars that have figured out that sort of thing and can can imbue objects with power yeah. and that sort of thing. And I think let's keep it kind of vague. Yeah. But yeah, ma I think but I think magic is cool in the setting. So Perfect. cool that may that may uh, that 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 was that's definitely going to influence um, some play decisions. Yeah. So I need to think of a character name. Need to go to my folder with character images that I saved already in the past for Merfolk, if I can find it. That is, I already did my work, viewers. So, because I have a go-to name that I'll just always choose for any situation. Okay. Yeah. It wouldn't yeah. work for the Merf Merfolk, probably. I I have I have one character. I I I have a friend of mine that I've been gaming with for like thirty plus years, and he doesn't always use it. But he's got like a he's got like a he's got a he's got one generic name for a. Uh, he's got one generic name that he that he uses regardless of, of and that is uh you know it's like well I'm going to I'm going to play Miles Freelander. Yeah, it's a game that works in any setting. <laughs> I am not playing Dark Miles Freelander. Uh, yeah. That's such an adorable photo. Yeah. He looks like a teddy bear. Yeah. I especially like the little crown. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even noticed that. I love it. I love it. Thank goodness I already have a folder with some more people images, so this would have taken forever. Yeah, yeah. So, but how are we called? How are the merfolk called? 
and the clan. Oh. I'm doing a quick I'm doing a quick image search and I'm trying to find one that's not Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. Um <laughs> there's so many. Yeah. People are always like, yeah, no, this guy. Shark. Yeah. Does anyone have a good good idea for a Merfolk clan name? I can't or even like think a of a company name for my ship. Thought of a ship name. I know my Ooh, duty. Uh, but I'm like, I don't know what a company name is. Is that like easy company? That's, I think that's sort that's, of the company that made the ship, maybe. Maybe. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm not I was too big on nautical history. Yeah, yeah, I was stuff. thinking. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking along the lines of like a uh, um, East Empire Trading Company type. Yeah, thing. exactly, exactly. I don't like that. One. Or it could be like a yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why they used company. That may be a. You know that. May well, be a... I mean, a lot of. I mean, I guess historically there was a lot of trading companies that commissioned these ships. Yeah. Company is also, I mean, company is also a, company is also a military division. You know, yeah, because like, like I was thinking wrong? comic books, like Sergeant Rock and Easy Company, but like, that's an army thing that I know of better. But... Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, like it's, you know, a company, it's, you know, it's like. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah. going to matter too much, so I'm not going to yeah. really deal with it. I mean, you know, a company, it's yeah. larger than, a it's larger than name... a brigade, but smaller than a. <laughs> a clan yeah. name is way more important since it seems to be your main thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Is there a random generator for that? Merfolk. Yeah, true. What's Merfolk the Merfolk name names? Either? It's not the same. Tribe names. Pacifica. Oh, yeah. Wait, what's the ocean called again? Let's see. The Dallum Sea. The South Dellum Sea. Caracuda. It's pretty good. The, the Caracudas. <laughs> but I don't look like a Caracuda. No, but let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, I found a uh I found I found an image that has uh, cha changed the uh changed my character concept. There we are. Perfect. Oh my. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it does like your clan worship any specific deity that could be like the basis of their name. Oh, true. Oh my god, I found another good. I have too many good mermaid pictures and now I can't mermaid <laughs> pictures and now I can't decide. I have a more creepy one. And maybe since I'm looking at at, look, at your pictures and I think maybe that's an even better fit. So let's go with this one instead and then if it works, does it work? Where did I put the picture? Let's try again. Oh, yeah. And then I'll be uh, they, them, because I feel like merfolk have a different idea about gender than humans. And a different name. Um, how would we call ourselves? Goodness, I need to. <laughs> I 
as a, there's at least a generator for that. So, but it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Maybe I'm too impatient. <laughs> I got I got the merfolk one up. Oh, very good. Uh, I need a new uh, name for me as a person, and I still need a clan name, and the page is still loading for me. I don't know why it's taking so Oh, there it is. So. Huh. Fantasy name generator has a mermaid slash merman name generator. Yeah. They aren't very good. No, they aren't it's, very good. There's a lot of Greek stuff, you know. Yeah. Board? How is that? How is that a merfolk name? Yeah, that was a... named after a board that they found. Zale. Sorry, what was that? Zale, Z A L E. Zale. Yeah, why not? Let's not overthink it. And my clan are the... No idea. Talori. That works. Whatever that, whatever that means. Why is it green? That was probably my fault when I was doing conditional yeah. formatting. No worries. Conditional formatting. It's oh, just yes. we like the C. There we are. Thank you. I just turned off conditional formatting. Yeah. Cool. Uh, is there anything else I need to choose? So I guess we'll talk a little bit about the faction. So I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read off the faction mm -hmm. information for the benefit of those who are watching at home. Yeah. Uh, so again, I'm just I'm just reading this straight out of the book. Could we uh, each the, just read our own faction? Oh, you know that'd be good. That'd be good. Why don't we each read our own factions? Let's just go in order of how they're shown in the in the factions on the factions All tab right, of the so character keeper. We start with Merfolk. Um, the Merfolk have inhabited the oceans around Karkatu since before there were islands to walk upon. Uh, I am one of these Merfolk, a noble trained guardian of the sea, and humans have brought conflict to my otherwise or our otherwise peaceful waters. We have maintained a tenuous peace with the humans who have come to the islands, but the clan fears that this peace is not built to last as their conflict as conflicts escalate with each passing day. We have been raised to believe that our people uh, are the guardians of these islands and no one can be permitted to spoil them with war. And uh, we use our lifetime of training to defend, or I use my lifetime of training to defend Karkatu and its waters from conflict. And my first line of defense is to alleviate tensions without violence. However, I know that my duty demands I stop those who would cause open war in Karkatu by whatever means necessary. And the merfolk from my clan are my friends. Uh, uh, merfolk from other clans are my allies. The Queen's Navy and pirates are um, our rivals. And when they incite open violence, they become our enemies. And um, should I... Yeah, go ahead and say... Say, yeah, like, um, as a person, uh, my character is called Zale. It goes by they, them pronouns but probably doesn't care much either way because I think pronouns are meaningless to Merfolk. And I am a curious, alluring, and powerful. And my clan's name is the Talori. And yeah. Cool. It says to think uh, about whether I've already lost my fins and I don't think I have, but um I'm supposed to think about what might tempt me to sacrifice them, but I think I'll keep that question open and decide in the moment when it becomes relevant. Excellent. So, yeah. So, I will read about the pirates. The seas that surround both Karkatu and, and the Burkath Keys are no strangers to the pirates. 
those who sail under an independent flag claiming all that they can as their own. I am one of these pirates, loyal only to my ship, my captain, and my crew. Many reasons could lead someone to take up a life of piracy, and whatever your reason is, you spent the better part of your life upon the seas, feeling more at home upon the ocean than on dry land. You spent your career as a pirate traversing the sea, looking for the next score, be it following rumors of buried treasure, scouting shipwrecks, or overtaking royal ships and commandeering their cargo. You are no stranger to Karkatu, knowing it is a safe haven of rest between months spent on the open ocean. And you'll be damned if you allow the Queen's Navy to claim it as their own. Your crewmates are your friends. Other pirates and merfolk are your rivals, though at times they may act as your allies. The Queen's Navy are your enemies. Um, so I am playing uh, Captain Angela Black, known as the Sea Vixen, captain of the pirate vessel the Flying Fox. Uh, she, her, uh, she is commanding, fiery, and indomitable. Um, also about, uh, back here, uh, it also says, uh, just a little thing at the end of the here, it says, your crewmates are like you, those who have given their lives to the sea in search of riches, fame, and fortune. If you are their captain, think of them as hired hands. They may be close to you, but you hold over, you hold authority over them. And I'm choosing. I am choosing yeah. to be the. Ca I'm choosing to be a captain. Yeah. All right. The Queen's Navy sails under the flag of its monarch, Queen Nicoletta of the Burkhath Keys. The Queen seeks to expand her empire and eradicate piracy from its waters. She has ordered her extensive Royal Navy to sail out in search of new lands, and to test any challenges to her rule. You are one of these sailors, charged with exploring and claiming the islands of Karkatu for your sovereign while opposing piracy at every turn. You and your crewmates are dedicated to your queen and determined to claim new lands and spread her rule as you are able, knowing that you will be rewarded handsomely when you do. Arriving at Karkatu was a welcome respite from the weeks spent at sea, but you know there is no time to waste. It's time to bring the islands of Karkatu under rightful rule. Sailors that are members of your crew are friends. Sailors from other companies are your allies. Pirates are your enemies. The merfolk are your rivals. I am Dominique Allais. Uh My traits are charming, statuesque, and idealistic. The ship is the Intrepid, and I'm the first mate. Um, my crewmates are like me, commissioned sailors hired by the Queen to help expand the Empire. They're skilled seafarers who have already proven their mettle on other ships. I am not. If I are a crew member, they are my fellows in arms. We have established our characters. We have talked about our factions. Um, I think let's uh, let's take a ten minute break here. Um, yeah. Let's go back in ten minutes, and I think we'll each do a let's let's each do a let's each do an open solitaire scene to sort of like set the scene, and then we'll. Then we'll figure it out there. So yeah, let's let's come back in ten minutes. And we're back. So um just for the for the for the sake of the viewers at home, uh this is a firebrands framework game, and the way that works is there are a number of this uh this this game firebrands games have a number of basically mini games. Um that that you play, and each one is a little distinct. Uh, each one is each one is very different from the others. Um, they kind of work like very extended PBTA moves uh, to a certain extent. Um, I know that the original designer, uh, the Bakers, the original designers of Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands, considers it a considered the the progenitor game, a powered by the apocalypse game. Although it plays very differently than a lot of PBTA games, so. It's sort of like spawned its own design movement. So there are a number of games to choose, most of which you pick one other. Most of the time, when you pick a you pick a game, you pick a partner to play that game with, and depending on the game you're playing, the other players may or may or may not be able to join in. Um, with the exception of the game Solitaire, um, so I think we're going to start with Solitaire. That's a game you play by yourself, um, but it's intended so that you know if you've got a lot of people playing, you can kind of like 
play that silently by yourself to like think about your character. Um, for an online game like this, I find like one round of open solitaire to sort of like establish our characters um, is, is a good way to get going. Um, and every piece, uh, every faction has their own version of solitaire. Um, those are shown on the solitaire tab of the of the character keeper, or if you want to go to the game chooser tab, um, that is listing all of the various. That's listing all of the various um, uh, factions. If you want to set current player to your uh, current player to to yourself when you're playing, uh, that'll also throw some logic in there as to like which solid mm -hmm. which solitaire game you're playing. My character keepers are not nearly as extensive as say Arctosaurs, but uh, there there is some logic here. Yeah. Would anyone like to volunteer to go first for uh, for a round of solitaire? I am happy to if no one else would like to. Please yeah, go I'll ahead. Whoever. I'll do it. Sure. Yeah. Go for uh, it, Julian. Yeah. It. Uh, where was it? Uh, I attempted to make contact with the Merklin. And as I started making progress, tires arrived and ruined the whole thing. Nice. nice. You want to talk? Do you want to do a little bit of a scene there, or uh, like how how that worked? Um, I mean, I could like narratively describe it, I guess. Yeah, like, that's, hey, that's what I mean. Like, just kind of, we're just, just kind looking of... to like establish uh, a foothold, maybe build a little outpost, and uh, yeah, pirates got wind of it, and they're like, hey. They don't we don't they don't like the navy. They think we're here to ruin everything. And we're just trying to make lives better for everyone. But uh it did not go well. So what did what did the pirates so... do? To, what did the pirates do to destroy it if or oh, to uh, I or think to... they I think they showed up pistols at the ready. They were ready for a fight, and we're like, hey, okay, look. <laughs> this is not what we're here to do right now. <laughs> awesome. So uh, you said you you, uh, you, may, you attempted to make contact with the Murakons, is that, is that right? Yeah, we were attempting, yeah, yeah, we were starting to make progress. Yeah. You know, talking with them, dealing with them. Like, all right, here's, here's what we'd like. Here's Here's basically our benefits package. Yeah. Yeah, but then, of course, the pirates. Yeah. Would attack. We just want to put up a flag. <laughs> yeah. Right. It means nothing. <laughs> yeah. We were like, oh, yeah, okay, it looks, looks nice. The colors are nice. Oh, thank you. Thank of, you. Of the flag. And... I wish I could have said I chose them myself, but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly less intimidating than a skull. But yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's just like the setup of what the navy has been up to recently. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Perfect. Would you like to do a sol a solitaire Andrea? Yeah, Andrea? I can, um, I can, yeah. I can go ahead. Um I spent some well earned time off on land and I completely lost track of time and barely made it back to the water by midnight. And what happened uh, was I was in one of these taverns and there was dancing. There was dancing. And I mean, I'm, I still feel kind of clumsy with these feet and things and legs and whatever but yeah this dancing thing that's amazing and yeah I nearly I nearly I nearly had legs permanently and I think I don't know maybe did I dance with one of you were you there Or sure, like, I, 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 could, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I could have been there. Pirates, yeah. you know, we, we like to spend time at the tavern. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we probably were bragging about, uh, like interrupting the navy. the navy and 
I was taking time off. I wasn't involved in these talks and things anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful when you're negotiating with a gotta be careful when you're negotiating with the Navy. You might have accidentally, like from their perspective, ceded control of things when you were merely, you know, when they you might have ceded control to them by according to their laws. Yeah, no, I would know if I had ceded control to someone. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Cool. So what did uh, you do? What did I do? Um, I think my, I think we found the wreckage. So the, my ship, the flying Fox, we found the wreckage of a Navy ship on, <clears throat> yeah, we, we found the, we, we found the wreckage of a Navy ship. Um, it had been abandoned, um, but it, went aground on uh it went aground on some reefs that had been uncharted uh we knew they were there of course but uh the navy didn't um and uh so once they you know you know once it had been a day or so since uh the crew abandoned since the since the navy crew abandoned ship in a bunch of small boats and made it to a nearby island we sailed out to see what we could find um, unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we hadn't been there for, you know, we had, we had, we had anchored, uh, we had sent, a we'd sent a few small boats over to start going through the wreckage to see if there was anything we could, we could salvage. Um, I think we had, I think we had loaded like a single cannon, uh, of theirs, um, aboard, aboard our boats when, uh, two more two more naval vessels uh we, we saw we saw navy ship sails on the horizon and they came in very quickly so we weren't able to salvage much at all before more navy ships arrived um and they fired uh they you know they fired a broadside in our general direction uh we didn't get hit but we decided it was uh we decided we were outnumbered. Uh, they were upwind. Of, they were upwind of us. We were in shallow waters. They were in deep waters. It was time to cut our losses to like take the take the meager amounts of treasure we were able to salvage, and 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 we sailed off. Yeah. Right. Amazing. And this is supposed to give give us something we take into the next scene right like some some and either something someone has heard or yeah. something about us it's like a what have you heard you might lately notice about the others yeah yeah exactly yeah. exactly um so yeah ending solitaire because of these I'll just, I'll just read the move uh so because of these events there's something about you some detail of your mood your actions your appearance that ever that everyone else might notice decide what that detail is the next game you play, say it. Because of these events, there might be something, some news, some gossip or intelligence that everyone else has heard. Decide whether there is. If there is, then at the beginning of the next game, whether you're playing or not, say what it is. Mm -hmm. So that brings us to... Um, so that brings us to... that. So that concludes our round of Solitaire. Um, so I guess that means... Uh, so we've all done a round of solitaire. I was figuring we'll each we'll each do a I figure we'll each do a we'll each pick a game. Uh mm -hmm. like we'll, each of us will pick a game and then we'll we'll just kind of go around, we'll play the game. Um you know, maybe we'll take another break after each of us have, has played one game, then we'll come back. We'll each play another game and then we can decide if we want to play a third game or if we've told enough of a story to uh to to conclude this uh to conclude the session. Mm -hmm. If we come to a nice conclusion, we'll uh, we'll end there. If not, if we want to keep playing and we've got time, uh, we can. <clears throat> um, I guess the next question is, who would like to who would like to pick a game and start? Um, I, th I think Andrea had had were you the were you the one who picked the first solitaire or that was me? That uh, was you. Yeah, okay. Oh, me. that was Julian. Okay. So I guess we can just keep going in that order if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. I got a nice, easy one. Uh, yeah. 
salvage mission. Ooh. Everyone plays. Uh, the characters meet to vie for the treasure with a newly discovered sunken wreck. Mm-hmm. Determine who is in ships and who is not. Uh, Navy, probably in ships. Pirates? I think we're also in ships. I All think right. we're we're also in a ship. All right. Merfolk, presumably not. Yeah. Don't no, we don't them. have ships. That yeah. ship just, just Why would you need them? Just inconvenient. You also join the mission with your crew. It's maybe a loyal band of thieves, cadre of mer divers, or your literal ship's crew. Any reasonable group of people who would join you in the search for treasure is suitable. What do you notice about each other and what have you heard? So I think uh, what folks notice about Dominique and her folk, they're on edge. You know, tensions, you know, things, you know, because everybody, you know, people heard about uh, certain captains have been bragging about interfering in Navy peace missions. And, uh, you know, there's the has it, there's the fear of things are going to break out. But, hey, look, you know, we've got our. We've got our rape, we've got our blades on us. So pistols probably not so good if we're like diving. But you know, things are on edge with the Navy. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. I think you maybe maybe you notice that Dale is humming one of the human songs mm -hmm. that is currently very popular in the taverns. And seems to be in a good mood. Nice. Oh, this one's doing well. So I think standing at the um I think Standing at the prow of the flying fox, um, with you know, like uh, you know, her like blue, you know, she's she's wearing like a she's like wearing a a stylized like blue captain captain's jacket. Um, I don't think she's wearing a bicorn. Um, I don't think that's her. That's too that's too navy. Um, uh, but you know, she's got a you know she's got a spyglass and um. You know, is is scanning the is scanning the horizon. Um, a only question: Is this the same? Is this the same wreck that uh, we were here? That we were south? That uh, no, got chased off, or is this a it different is one? It is not. It is a wreck of a foreign power. We'll say the the Ursins. Sure, awesome, love it. Uh, I so no, feel a lot so, of nation names from Seven C. John Wick, try and sue me. Go ahead. I'm go okay. for it. I still never played Seven C, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> I love it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's like yeah, that sounds like my opinion of first edition Traveler. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. I love it. But oh my god, is it a terrible game? <laughs> but hey, it's forty years old. What do you want? Um. Okay, yeah. Uh, so That's I think up. she is, uh, you know, so she's at the prow of the, she's at the prow of her ships, kind of like scanning the horizon to make sure that no one else is approaching. Um, and we, I think we do see that there's, you know, a, there's a, uh, there's a navy, you know, she sees the navy ship that is anchored, you know, maybe a quarter mile away. We are within gun, we are within, I think we are within broadside range of each other, but you're not taking overtly hostile actions with each other other than we've dropped, you know, other than, you know, we've got a couple of small boats that we've dropped that are, uh, that are rowing over toward the, toward the wreck. Um, and we, and we see that the Queens Navy has probably done the same. Um, I think, she, I think, uh, I think Captain Black is looking, um, I think she's looking Hopeful and perhaps a little jovial that well we seem to have a we seem to have a bit of a race here let's let's see let's see who let's see who prevails. All right. So then, 
uh, conducting the salvage mission. We go around the table. Each player gets two turns. I go first. On my turn, on your turn, choose an enemy player's character and give them a challenge. I think rival will also count in this because, you know, then they yep. answer it freely. So, I am going to... All right. I managed to wrap a rope around a large crate and begin hauling it to the surface. Captain Black. Are you able to take it before it breaches the water? How? I'm going to say... I'm going to say yes, we are. Um, yeah, I think you've probably... I think you've got a couple of Navy... I think you've got a couple of crew members who are diving um, and... You know, they've dived down to like secure this big crate and they're hauling it up. Um, I think we are approaching in, uh, again, a, a small, you know, a small boat. Um, you know, it, it's a small boat. It's got, uh, I think it's probably got like eight, eight pirates aboard. It's one of those small craft that, you know, you could put up a mast and sail, but usually it's, uh, you, usually you've got like oarsmen that are, they're rowing and, they're rowing right now, um, and I think what happens is uh, it's it's almost it's almost like a whaler longboat. Um, they've got sort of they've got sort of a harpoon, but it's got like a big it's it's like got a big scythe like blade on the on the front, and one of our and the and like uh, a very large burly um, like like burly man. Um, throws the harpoon um at the like in the direction of the um in the direction of your ropes um and you know there's a there's a line coming off the back of it and they're able to time it just right that when the harpoon hits the you know hits the water and goes toward your uh toward the toward your rope that's pulling up the crate Mm -hmm. um just at that time the other crewmen like yank on you know, like yank on the line and when pull it taught. backward and it, it the uh the blade was sharp on the inside and it it just cuts the rope and mm -hmm. the crate goes the crate goes down to the the crate goes down again and you're pretty sure that the pirates have some divers down there that are about to do more or less the same thing to like mm -hmm. a tie, tie a rope you know yeah, we tie their tie their own the rope. rope to the tie their own rope to the uh, to the end that's uh, uh, to to the to the slack end. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that means it's my it's my turn. I believe so. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's a good it's a good order. Just keeping yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Um. I think. That. Uh, the Norfolk have seen the true treasure um, and we want to distract you. And um, let's see. I think... Who do we want to distract? It doesn't matter, right? Uh, we want to distract the Navy, I think. And... What we do is that I send some, or we send some merfolk uh, swim over to the other side of the wreck to sort of distract you from where the actual treasure lies. And the question is, do you see through our plan? And if so, how? I... No, I don't think they do. Because they, you know, we're like, hey, the merfolk know these waters better than us. So they're probably going to that place. Um, so, yeah, the, we're following them, but we're mm -hmm. trying to, like, beat them, obviously. And obviously, yeah. your people aren't actually going towards anything. So they're going to let my people just beat them to nothing. Mm -hmm. Just, like, some crates of just ruined stuff. Yeah. So they're like, huh. And we're like, do merfolk like garbage? <laughs> that's yeah. what like that's the that's the confusion. They're weirder than we thought. Back up the ship. I'm like, yeah. we don't know about these people. 
Yeah. Amazing. So now the, the pirates probably have a clear path ahead. So the question I'm taking is, I direct my crew to keep cover, moving toward the wreck with stealthy precision. So I think what mm -hmm. happens here is, while this is all going on in in one direct in in one direction, um, I think Captain Black herself has gotten into one of is has gotten into one of the boats, uh, has gotten into another of the small boats, and um, maybe there's a little bit of fog that's rolling in. They're keeping they're keeping to the fog. Um, and they're kind of going around the back of, you know, maybe there's some, you know, maybe there's some like rocks or, or there's a reef here that the, that the ship had run aground on. They're going around the other side to approach from the other direction um, to mm -hmm. try to, you know, to try to keep from being seen. Um, to the Navy, are you able to spot us as we progress? How? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, mostly because our captain has is familiar with your reputation. They're, they're familiar with your tactics. They've read about this before. They've gone through this before. So they're like, hey, I know what's going on. This is, this is a double bluff. <laughs> they're like getting us in the right spots to make sure that we're not like take completely by surprise. We're like, all right, okay. Love it. Like, damn, that Cam Black, yeah. she's real smart. Yeah. Oh, I never figured that out. All right. So back to me. Um, let's see. This is to Zale. Mm-hmm. I find a break in the scuffle because there's some fighting going on between the Navy and the pirates. Maybe even some of the merfolk are getting in on fighting just for fun or like, hey, you know, you know, delay you. Uh, but I find a break in the scuffle and make a direct dive towards the wreckage. I'm faster than you anticipated. I mean, especially I'm I don't got gills. Yeah, I'm not used to just like living in the water. Can you cut me off before I reach my target? And how? Oh. And like, yeah, I say, I'm like very the target is like clearly there's like this sunken thing. And it's wrapped up like it's clearly like waterproof leather casing, but it's like not a big chest thing. It's clearly just like it looks like it would be a journal. Mm hmm. Oh, I think I'm very surprised. I've never seen humans dive that quickly. And I think I try to to cut you off, but I don't think it works because I think you're aiming for that pile of gold coins, mm -hmm. but you're not. Mm -hmm. And that throws me off and that makes me like, because I kind of I, I I I swim in the wrong direction, and then you you get to make off with the yeah with the leather covered salute, bundle a wink as I swim yeah. back to the surf. Yeah, prize in hand. Yeah, but now I'm very curious. Like, why did you take that? I'm very curious. I will have to go back to the taverns, find out more. All right. So I guess that goes Zale's to... next. Yep. So I think that's I was gonna say I think Zale is next. Oh sorry, um yeah. I got distracted because I thought but I just did something. <laughs> um, <laughs> um then let's see. Um, yeah, I think uh, we're, I think this is for the pirates. Um, we're in the wreckage now. 
and I swim through a gap that you didn't think I could pass through. It's probably these merfolk shape-shifting powers that I used. And I don't know, there's no direct way you can follow me, at least not without taking out one of these boards that are blocking your path. But do you find a way to keep pursuing me? And if so, how? I'm thinking, I'm thinking not. Um, I'm thinking that if this is an actual, you know, where we've got divers, you know, you know, I'm like swimming through the water here, um, trying to get at some treasure. Um, I'm a human. You're a mer you're a merfolk. You can breathe underwater. You've got a fish tail. I'm holding my breath and I'm just like swimming with. I don't even think I've got swim. I don't think I don't think we've got swim fins. I don't think those have really been a thing. Uh, we're just swimming through. We're just swimming barefoot through the water. I, I don't think there's a way that we can keep up with merfolk uh, and this sort of thing. You know, we got to go right in, grab the thing, and right up before we run out of air. <clears throat> and you don't. And you are not uh, constrained by. Yeah. You're not. You're not constrained by lack of air because you can breathe underwater. Yeah. So yeah, I don't. I don't think we're able to keep up. I think we realize that. You know, this is. I, I think me and my I think me and my dive team realize that you know this is yeah we we, we can't keep up with you so we just let, we we're gonna let you have that prize yeah um yes it's back to me um mm -hmm. I'm gonna address this one toward the Queen's Navy um. We rush at you just as you reach valuable salvage, knocking you from your course and holding you back as my crew advances. I think this is on the surface. Um, I think you've got a couple of boats. We've got a couple of boats. We're coming right at you as you know. You've got you know you've got a couple of small boats on the surface. You've got again you've got divers underneath that are like bringing things up, but we're rushing at you to basically cause your boats to scatter such that when your sailors surface. It's going to be us there instead of you. Um, so we're we're just going to take the we're just going to take the salvage that they had, that they had brought up. Um, at least that's what we're planning to do. Um, are you able? Um, just lost my place. Where are we? Uh, yeah, I rush at you as you reach valuable salvage. Uh, are you able to break free of my attack? How? And Jolene, you're muted. I think as we see, like, you've basically rushed. You've got our, like, exit points surrounded. Um, that's when uh, I, I give in the order, like, hey, give them what they want. Your lives are not worth losing on this this mission. And there's, like, a stare down, like, just like we catch each other's eyes and I I give you a, a nod of respect, if not begrudging respect. And it's just like this this woman vexes me left and right. She would have made a great naval officer. As we just like drop what we're like, all right, you can take it. You can you can have this. Fine. All right, so now I choose an end. Yes. I think during a pitch battle, the wreckage becomes unstable, sliding deep into an underwater chasm beyond even the Murr's reach. With nothing left to fight for and no victor, we all solemnly part ways. I like it. All right. So I completely missed that because I was typing up a note. Okay. Uh, would so, you please uh, repeat that? No problem. I'm sorry. During like a pitch battle, like some of the pirates and the merfolk, like, you know, we're able to like get on. We're just like, you know, we've got our weight belt holding us down so we can like, you know, be in the, the some of the sunken wreck. But like during the fight, the wreckage becomes unstable and slips into a deep chasm beyond even the mer people's reach. Uh, so we all just like take what we got and slink home no no true no no clear victor 
like the biggest the big chest of glitter and gold just slowly fades away into darkness yeah uh, i love after it after the mission yeah perfect right. After the mission, Please. remind everybody that if the scene has left them with unfinished business, a grudge, or a new objective, they should bring it into their next game. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Dominique and Captain Black have a bit of a grudge going on here now. Yeah. yeah. There's and a I mystery think, of the journal. Yeah, Zale. Zale's got mysteries. So. Yeah. And also maybe the pirates need to find out, like, figure out a way to follow there are people the next time. Need better weight yeah. belts. Yeah, maybe there's a maybe there's some kind of a magic potion that we can find <laughs> that'll allow us to breathe underwater. Yeah. All right. Andrea, it is your time to pick a mate. Yeah. I'm thinking of like following up on the journal thread and maybe I want to have a conversation over food Ooh. with Dominique um, to maybe find out more about this journal. Oh, cool. So we are supposed to figure out how we uh, came to be eating together and I guess where we are eating. And um, other players can join freely if it makes sense for their characters to be present at the meal. So I would leave this open, like when you think there's a good uh, moment for the pirates to make an entrance. Um, so where are we? Where do we eat together? There's probably like, huh? Are the talks just still ongoing? Like the yeah, I think so. Maybe maybe it's in a break. And we're having we're having some some food. Yeah, I was wa wondering: uh, Does the navy go to taverns from time to time? Yeah, I mean, probably. What else is there? Yeah, exactly. Because not I mean, everybody living on Kaka, this island, yeah, is a pirate. It's yeah. just like, hey, there's merchants that just like, hey, we can make money off these people. So, yeah, yeah we're yeah. you know, she's eating at the, she's having a nice. Some shore leave at the tavern. Yeah. Going over the journal that she's got. Yeah. Maybe it's a different tavern. Maybe it's a slightly nicer tavern than the <laughs> the one I was dancing at. Sure. Um makes sense to me. Yeah. So and oh, so I yeah, think... what you notice is like she's yeah. got her nose almost deep in that book as she's like, you know, just like pouring through it. Mm -hmm. And where yeah, and I heard? think well, you've heard that there's like probably there's some growing animosity between her and Captain Black. Yeah. The sea vixen. Yeah. And I think what you might have heard is that the mer people got away with something valuable. I don't think you know what it is, but you know the pirates want it. Mm -hmm. And I think I think it's you sitting there having your meal, and I kind of just sit down. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, she doesn't notice you for like. A full minute yeah. until she's like, oh. Yeah, I think you notice me when I take some of the fish from your plate and just. Yeah, and, and like her fork it. goes to grab it and just clink. Like, wait a second. What? Yeah. Hello. Oh, um. Good evening. I'm sorry. This I didn't. A... Yeah, this is and a very. Closes the book. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. know you had joined me. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I, well, I should quickly uh, explain the rules for this mini game for uh, anyone watching. So we take turns, and uh, I think I just I guess I just decided to go first. Yeah, totally. And I have uh, options. I can either ask a, a question from a list uh, provided in the game. We can engage in improvised conversation. Um, 
we can sort of pass and say something about the food or just be silent and we can leave the conversation. And um, yeah, I guess we just decide when when it's over, there's like a, not a certain number of turns, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I think uh, uh, at, at first it's like, yeah, I think basically it's just like, I need an honor, honest answer about like what it is about this journal, uh, but I, I wanna play it out a little bit. Um, yeah, no, I get Hey, it. this is a very interesting book. Oh, have. yeah, it was, um, I'm very lucky to have managed to secure it. Why, why is this so lucky? Is it a, oh, I does mean, it tell is... fortunes? Is it, no, is no, it a ripping it's... story? What no, is it no, it's book? just nothing like that. And she's, you know, she opens it up and there's like, clearly there's lots of drawings of like the stars. And then there's like, you know uh some some maps that of like islands it's just like uh so this was the navigator's journal of the oh. ship and what I, it's also just got like filled with like you know the star charts and you know just it's just like of a, a scientific as you know scientific interest to me like it's just very useful for figuring out what else has the journey that their ship went on to get here because like you know the the path from our homeland to Ur Ursa is normally way longer and they they managed to get here and you know if i can back tr follow follow their steps along the way we can maybe figure out a different you know yeah. route to them yeah it's so is that, fascinating is that, yeah is that is that true are you telling me the truth yeah no yeah yeah, I think I just sit there and basically sort of like chin hands and going like, this is so fascinating how you humans approach travel. Yeah, how does like it work? Like how for you have to you? account for weather and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, also like, I mean, obviously you don't travel. You Do, do you use the stars at all to help navigate? Mostly, we just look at them because they're beautiful. This is true. But also, like, if you notice, like, they're in very particular patterns. And we've... Uh, yeah. We've been keeping... We've been trying to track them and chart them. They help us... They help guide us home. That is... That is fascinating. Oh, I've seen this pattern before. And I, I point to one one star pattern that I recognize. And I'm feeling forthcoming. What do you want to know about me? Ooh. Um I think uh, I think Zale is a little bit torn uh, between finding out more about the stars and finding out more about you and uh, sort of says like, but this is fat. And I definitely want to know more about how you use these stars to travel. And this is interesting. We could, we could maybe, I mean, I, I just kind of like to float on the ocean and look at the stars because they're, they're beautiful. Did you ever do that? Uh, not so much floating in the ocean. Uh, I I lay I like to lay back on the deck from time to time. I mean, floating on the ocean is uh, I like to float in the you know the the shallow waters. That way I don't get yeah. like pulled away too far. Um, but yeah, yeah, I guess you I have mean, to think I, about that. I love astronomy. It's one of like I started off as a navigator, and now I'm you know through my skills and my communication, it, my connection with the crew i've become sort of the 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 right hand woman of the captain yeah yeah i see i see how that would be how that would be useful and i, and I need a second to scan the list and see what else no problem is there if there's anything i can i can use um
I think I probably still need you to reassure me regarding the pirates. And I think what I what I say is well, I mean it was a it was a bit of a I mean I'm I have to admit I'm kind of glad that this shipwreck sank down to the bottom of the chasm recently because it for a moment it looked like you were there was a fight going to break out like what's what's going on with you and the pirates like we've got why are you fighting that's that's a tricky question or maybe a complicated question but um so officially according to our superiors they're criminals i mean they they attack ships and they sink sometimes they sink ships and you know people die and just because they want what the other people have like they're they don't care about the laws they don't care mm. about what's like they care about making profit for themselves and while i can't like countries do that too uh but you know we're supposed to be above that we're supposed to like respect one another i mean that's why i signed up with the navy because you know i wanted to like well one see the world chart out more the stars I islands but like we shouldn't be just like pillaging we you 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 get more uh, it's an old saying but you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar mm -hmm. and so like if we can make more allies and friends in the world i think that's the difference between us i mean they have their friends as well obviously like they are you know they they don't like what we represent and I can understand that even if I don't agree with it. Yeah, yeah, I see. I I like what you said about being friends. I I like being friends with people. Like we more for generally. Do we we don't like we don't like the fighting. We don't like the yeah. violence unless it's absolutely necessary. Understandable. But, hmm. Yeah, that has that has been very, very enlightening, and I think then I go now. Tell me more about the stars. Okay. Well, and... I mean, would you ever want to just like go out and either walk the beach or swim the shore and just? Oh, we could study? float on the water together and look at the stars, and you could explain them to me. I mean, I can I can try to explain them. I can just give you our perspective on them. I mean, there's just so yeah, well, much I about mean, the world that, that we don't that, understand. That that yeah, I guess. But I mean, yeah, like what, you you start with one perspective, right, and then you add. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's what learning is, right? Learning that things is, from yeah. a new point of view. Like, there's so much you could teach us about these waters, this island, your your your, your own people. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you wouldn't know everything we know, obviously. Yeah. How I would mean, you? There's, we've got rumors yeah. of merfolk back home, but they're rarely so prevalent. And a lot of people that claim they see them aren't believed by most, but like, obviously, clearly, mer your people exist. You exist. Like, yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> we do. We do. Uh, and... Let's see. I I want to ask a topical question. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, uh... and there might uh, there might be a nighttime swim in the future. Yeah, I accident. It's definitely I'm drawn to our. I accidentally reveal, and then I cover yeah. myself. Oh, I actually yeah no, I accidentally reveal that like. I'm getting really into you and just like, hey, this is great. 
what like oh no wait i'm supposed to be professional i was like i mean yeah i would love to just like swim in the shallows with you but um, um i mean i obviously you know we should probably talk about maybe you know brokering a treaty or an alliance of some sort because you know, i've got you know just trying to be professional but like you know we could trade you know information about the stars for uh, the i don't the permission to build a little outpost or something yeah do you pick up on how like that she's not mm -hmm. right now she's more into just hanging out with you than but like yeah do you yeah. pick up on that i think i think i do i think i do i think um maybe i've seen this before with other humans and I'm like, oh yeah, you're doing that thing. That thing that you do. And then I don't explain it. Uh -huh. Huh? And God, yeah, wait, wait, I'm supposed to I I know how to react to that. And uh, maybe I think out loud as I as I say this. And um go like yes, yes, uh we we should of course uh continue the official talks. But, and I think I maybe, maybe I take your hand and just say like, but I would also like to continue this friendship we're beginning okay. to develop. Yeah. And that's like, she speaks. And then I take another piece of fish off you from your plate and just sort of lean on, on the table and just eat it. Yeah. And like you've got her hand and she's just speechless. Yeah. yeah. Like, and like, there's like the flush of the cheeks yeah. and like. Yeah, and I think that's a great place to cut the scene. Cool. Great. So, meanwhile, what are the pirates up to? That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, yes, thank you. So, I think... Um, just take a look at my options here. The one thing I wish this game had was the like a page with just like very short summaries of what the games are about. Mm. So because the titles aren't always obvious. Yeah. That is true. Maybe I'll uh I'll throw something like that in the uh maybe, maybe I'll throw something like that in the character keepers version. Um Yeah. I'm just going to I'm just going to mention for those who are watching at home. Uh, so this is a character keeper. We're using a character keeper that I wrote. Um, I'm deliberately not making it generally available because I've got more or less the, the entire text of the game in this, yeah. um, in, in the character keeper. So yeah, um, the game uses booklets. The, the, yeah. The game, the game uses like little physical booklets. And the idea is that, um, you know, the idea is that like different is that every, all the players would have one. Yeah, um so they can look at what they want to do coming up. that yeah. makes it hard for this can't yeah. really yeah that makes it hard to maybe make a duplicate tab of game chooser so people can look at the various things yeah that's true mm -hmm. if you want to there is a well there's there's a data file that has that but yeah maybe throwing a uh maybe, maybe putting just together copy a, the tab yeah that's true maybe maybe putting a copy of the tab or at least just having like or like having summaries summaries thereof duplicate Yep, yeah, there we go. Just duplicate it. Yeah, there we go. That way you yeah. can look at that way you can just look at uh, the other things that are going on. Potential things. Yeah. Yeah. That works. But also you should buy the game because it's very beautiful. The, the layout looks amazing. Oh, I think yeah. Najadi, I think, did the layout for this one. Yep. And it's really pretty as well. Yeah, he did. So yeah. And you know, and uh the author the author is Megan Cross. Um Yeah. Yeah, we should mention that as well. Yeah, the so, the author of this game is yeah. Megan Cross. Um who I follow on social media. I don't think I've ever like directly interacted other than like through social media. Yeah. Um, but uh, they, they, you know, they've got some pretty cool designs out there. Anyway, yeah. I think the one that I, I think the, I think the game that I am interested in doing is a little more action focused. Yeah, I want perfect. to do, I want to do pursuit. Ooh. Um, for those who have played Mobile Frame Zero Firebrands, this is works more or less identical to a chase from the from the original game, although the prompts are all kind of different. Um, 
And I think there's, and, and I think, I think it's most logical for the pursuit to be between the pirates and the queen's navy. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm going to read the setup. Uh. So only you and your chosen partner play. Choose which of you is the hunter and which is the mark. Um. I think it would be most interesting if the navy is chasing the pirates. Gotcha. Um. Ask your ask your partner how this chase came about. I think that while we were, you know, charting the waters and the islands, uh, we saw like you know your ship leaving a clearly bedraggled merchant ship that you had just plundered. So we're like, well, we've got to give chase. This is literally our job. Love it. What do we notice about each other? What have you heard? Uh, let's see. So I think, I think, I noticed that this is that this is that navy ship that we had that tangle. This is that queen's navy, particular queen's navy ship that we had that that tangle with um, over the over the wreck not too long ago. And because I recognize, I recognize the the configuration of the ship and. Uh, see it in the spy you know see it in the spyglass that uh, oh great the navy saw us they're coming after us we need to set mm -hmm. sail and go and i think uh we noticed that your ship's definitely su suffered some this this merchant ship was more armed than you expected when you first came upon it so they put up a good fight before they had to surrender i love it so you've got some damage on you yeah, I love it. I love it. The 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 uh, the flying fox. The flying fox has some. The flying fox does have some damage. Um, you know, a couple of its sails are torn. Um, and uh, and I think there's a. I I, I think, I think you can see some like cannon damage where we were we were hit a couple of times, although not below the waterline. Yeah, I have a question. Like, what is? Are you like way out on the open ocean? Are you like in between? several islands how does the the landscape look i think i think chase? we're not i think we're within sight of land um mm -hmm. uh and i think we're in a uh, part of this archipelago where there are a lot of islands that are fairly close there's a lot of small islands that are fairly close to each other yeah. but at the same time that also means there's a lot of reefs there's a lot yeah. of um there's a lot of reefs there's a lot of shoals so Going at full sail is probably not a great idea around here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these, I think these waters are charted or at least partially charted, but there's, we, people definitely run, run into unexpected things around here. Yeah. And maybe there's some like huge cliffs that you, you only know what's behind if you literally sail around the, the rock. Yeah, I think I think a lot of the yeah. smaller islands, um, they're like they're like you know on the map, but they're not they're not they're not fully explored as of yet. Yeah, right. So I think we're um, so it sounds like that we've the way we've established this is uh, this pursuit is happening on ships rather mm -hmm. than uh, rather than like on foot. So we're not being you're not we're not you know this is not a foot chase through the. Uh, through the streets of the uh, the port of Karkatu, we're we're in our we're in our ships. So, um, you are the hunter, I am the mark. Mm -hmm. So the mark conducts the chase. First, say where you're going. Um, I think the idea is, I think we want to get out of here and into the open sea. So it'll. Uh, I take that back. I think we're heading to a. Like a hidden cove. Yeah, like we're heading a to a cave. Yeah, we're heading. We're, yeah, we're heading to a. We're heading to a, a hidden cove that's hard to see from the ocean. Um, that we that like that uh, Captain Black knows about, <clears throat> and but it's not, it's not too far, but it's also not too close either. Mm -hmm. So it's under normal circumstances, it would be a. Th it, it'd be like a three or four hour sail. But we're uh, but uh, what we're being pursued. <laughs> so we are heading toward. So we're we're heading toward this hidden cove on one of the smaller islands. Um, 
lead the so conducting the pursuit uh lead the hunter through a series of four challenges and admissions choose freely except that the third one must be an admission during the chase you and the hunter gain tokens representing the distance you're able to gain on the other um and then after i can, Go on. I can just track your tokens thank you oh that'd so be great you don't have to worry that about the character key pile switching. just yeah. uh, Got it. Just Thank you. Appreciate that. Because uh, there is a token tracker on the characters tab. I also have coins in front of me, so I can flip yeah. easily. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, okay. Oh, and there's also um. Oh, right. And there's also the other thing is uh this one has a uh so so with this one there's th there's a throwing which is like tossing a yeah. coin. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You know, Let me I'm use gonna... this side with the head for heads and the red side for tails. Got it. Yeah. I cool. am um I am just getting a die. I don't yeah. actually have a coin on me. I'm just going to I'm getting a die. I'm going to just say um, even odds. Basically. Yeah, even as heads, odds as tails. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just getting a good old uh I'm getting a good old bone uh bone style d6. I think the hunter is yeah. the one that usually has to throw, but yes, I think you're right. I think the I think the hunter is the one that usually throws. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can figure this out as we go along. I think yep. as long as you have that works. Both have so, something to throw um, at hand. So Let's... the quarry goes. Um, so the mark. So the mark can the mark conducts the chase. Uh, so I guess I will. Um, Four challenges, uh, four challenges and admissions. Uh, so I think the first one is, I know this way well. Follow me if you're brave, but throw. On tails, you're pursuing me into unfamiliar territory. I don't need to choose an admission. I don't need to choose admissions during this chase. Right. It was heads. Heads. I don't, okay. I don't know if this works. Yeah. I'll okay. just say it. It'll be easier. I think that's it's easier. Too shiny. We uh, this yeah. one this one doesn't flip well because it's very heavy. Got it. Yeah. Like got it. Um and you know let's and I, I think you know I think we're all I think we're all trusting each other not to not to fudge die rolls so yeah or coin yeah. flips. So I know this way well. Follow me if you're brave, but throw. So on tails, you're pursuing me into unfamiliar territory, and I don't need to choose my admissions during this chase. But you've got heads, so let's uh, uh -huh. so let's describe this. I think I'm. <coughs> excuse me. So I think I'm. Uh, so I think I'm. Uh, so I think the flying fox is. Um, I think you got a smaller ship. Than we've the got Navy a small. Does. Yeah, that's. So definitely you're able true. to hug closer to the shore than we are. I think that's exactly it. We've got a smaller ship. It's got a lower draft, so we're able to uh, stay closer to the shore. And there's some there's some very shallow channels that uh, a ship of our size can navigate, but a ship of your size can't. Mm -hmm. But that means you can't get close, but you're in deeper waters. So that means we are actually going. You know, we're we're a smaller ship. We're more maneuverable, but we're we're do we're having to do more maneuvers. So you can't get yeah. close, but you're able to keep an eye. You're 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 still yeah. able to follow. We're us. like we don't know this territory, so I'm like constantly keeping a lookout for where it could look like the reef is. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. So now that. So that Navy was... gets to, no wait. No, no. it's just no. the prey Navy always doesn't gets get to. Pick. The, okay. the, pre yeah, the prey, yeah. the prey always goes. Um, yeah, right. Challenges. I'm gonna go challenges by ship. Um, I maneuver through a narrow reef with barely enough room to pass. Follow me if you're confident, but throw. <clears throat> On tails. Uh, well, yeah. So yeah, follow me if you're confident, but throw. All right, I'll try with the heavy one. I'll just have to like toss it up. It is tails. On tails, you narrowly avoid running aground while, uh, and while you're diverted, I gain one token, putting distance mm -hmm. between okay. us. Okay. 
you will get it. So I think the question more I think the question more or less uh, kind of kind of sets the scene. Um, and as we've as we've previously discussed, um, you know, my sh you know, the the flying fox is smaller uh, than. I'm sorry, what was the, the intrepid? Name? Intrepid. Uh, the flying fox is is smaller than the intrepid and is able to maneuver these reefs. <clears throat> um, more quickly. Um, and yeah, we're able to put uh, we're able to put. You know, we're we're able to put uh, quite like quite a bit more distance uh, between us, so we're farther ahead right. than uh, than you wanted to be. Well, did you uh, and, you chose the narrow reef one, right? I chose the narrow reef one. Yeah. Did okay. I? Did I? Did I? So on tails. Oh, the reef okay. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we did the wrong one. And I will need repairs after the pursuit. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I no was, uh, in this game, I was looking at the wrong one. Don't. Yeah, you don't get. You get I don't, don't get, get a, a token. Don't get a token. Don't get a token. Nowhere. But look, okay, you messed yeah. up my ship real good. Yep. Yeah. Um, we're still we're still keeping distance, but like I hear the sound of that reef, and I'm like, oh no, uh, fiddlesticks. Okay, so there's you, Sea Vixen. So, uh, so this is the third, and the third has to be an admission. Um. I spot a reef ahead. Uh, let's see. I'm not familiar with the smaller islands in this chain. Making my do I want to do that? Spot a ship. Spot a reef ahead. At the last moment, scramble to not throw on heads. You capitalize on my blunder and gain two tokens. Yeah, all of them can end with me yep. gaining to two tokens. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I spot a reef ahead at the last moment and scramble to navigate. Bro. Oh. All right. It is heads. On heads, you capitalize on my blunder and gain two tokens. Oh, sweet. So two tokens. You can't navigate. escape us this time, C Vixen. <laughs> um. Yeah, I feel like we get a dramatic uh, mm -hmm. image yeah, of like, like, uh, the, and we're yeah, like the, the ship around. is like creaking and leaning dangerously Listening. while the navy is gaining on you. Got it. So um, this is this is the fourth. Uh, I'm going to say I lead you to where currents are unpredictable. Follow if you're canny, but throw. All right. It is tails. On tails, the current pulls you away from me, and I gain a token. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, after a total of four challenges and admissions, compare tokens. And I think I you have, have two. You have two, two, and I have one. All right. Mm -hmm. If you have more tokens than the hunter, you break away and escape. If the hunter has as many tokens as you or more, choose one. Um, I've some so. I have to choose. Um, I've somehow mm -hmm. turned myself around. I blunder into you. You've driven me into a corner. I've nowhere to run, but there might be, uh, but might be able to enact a defense. Your allies have cut me off. I'm exhausted. I'm going to take. Uh, you've driven me into a corner. I've nowhere to run, but I might be able to enact a defense. Okay. Yeah. And set that up for a future scene. I've set that up for, and I've set that up for, and yes, I have set that up for a future scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so I think what happens is, uh, you know, with the reef and the currents, um, you know, and, you know, maybe you've maybe you've fired a couple of warning shots. Um, you know, we've turned, you know, I've we made a um, I don't. Yeah. Can I can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion that you go directly into a battle at sea? And like Ooh. continue with a different game? I like that. Okay. Since you're since you're there, and then we can go back to maybe the nighttime swim later, or sure. whatever we come up with. Sure. Because I'm perfectly fine with it. I wrote notes just in case. So. Yes, thank okay. you. Awesome. That's yeah, cool. I love it. I love it. Let's. I think that might go straight into a battle at sea. Um, look at the time. Um, why don't we take another? Uh, I think we've. I think 
Uh, I think we've all gone once around, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. when, mm -hmm. when do we, uh, why don't we take another break here? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want five or 10? I could go either way. Either way, fine. Uh, ten. Let's, let's take a 10 minute break. Okay, let's yeah. back. Uh, 45. Three, yeah, we'll come back at uh, yeah. quarter, t quarter till. Respectively, yeah. your own time, Zed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I guess it's still 45. Yeah, yeah it'll still be 45 after the hour, but uh, yeah. or it's just a different hour. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Hey. See you in a bit. Yeah. And we are back. And it is Jolene's turn to pick a game. And I think we said that, you know. Yeah, we're going to do a battle at sea. Makes logic that we're going, going yeah. straight from the pursuit into a battle at sea. Reading off the setup. Ask your chosen partner how you two became battling at sea. Basically the last scene. Uh, yeah. Other players can join freely if it makes sense for their characters to also be present. Determine who is in ships and who is not. It seems like we're both in ships, based off last scene. Uh, you also join the battle with your crew. Loyal band of thugs, cadre, and warriors, your literal crew. Uh, what do you notice about each other? What have you heard? I mean, we're again, we're following up from immediate last scene. Yeah, we're, we're you, going straight you, into this. You know, my ship's definitely got scratched to all heck. That needs repairs. But you, oh, yeah dead-ended basically yeah i'm dead-ended and i think both and at this point like both ships are i think we established in fiction that my ship um like it, it, at the start of the previous scene we just yeah, we, we established that, that my ship has my ship had also been damaged um in the um you know the piracy yeah. yep in the in the act of piracy so cool yeah all right during the confrontation anyone may ask anyone for details about the location landscape and circumstances Conducting the battle. Go around the table. You go first. On your turn, choose an action that makes sense and choose another player. Tell them what you are doing to their crew, their ship, or their person. When everyone's had two turns to take actions, it comes back around to you for your third turn. It's time to end the battle. Choose another player who participated in the battle. They will choose the end that best fits the action at that point. Optional, if we feel it hasn't reached a good ending conclusion we could agree to extend it for additional scenes all right so i will choose obviously captain angela c vixen is the target i'm uh from a high point in the rigging my best marksman is able to hit several crew on your deck killing none but incapacitating several as i'm like shouting up i'm like hey you know, make it, you know, we're, you know, we're looking to make it easier for if we end up having to board one another, you'll have less people able to board us if you try to do that to escape. Um, I think, yeah, in, in React, it's just like to play out, just to like play out that scene. Um, uh, I th think Captain Black shouts, uh, shouts orders for every, everyone to take cover. There's a sniper. Um, and um you know i think we i think we start you know i think you know rifles at ready i think we we start uh you know i i think we start like shoot fi firing back to like you know maybe give some suppressing fire that uh maybe your marksman needs to uh maybe your marksman needs to like you know get out of get out of the rigging um but uh let's see looking at mine um oh yeah i think i'm uh let's see Oh yeah, I'm going to do that. I, I'm going. To, I'm rather than rather than that. I'm like I direct my gun and st gunners to aim the cannons at your mast. A direct hit takes your ma uh, makes your mast severely weakened and mainsail threatening to fail. Mm -hmm. I think that's also. I think that was also in gonna reaction to like the sniper. Yeah, it's going to mess up the sniper who was in the crow's nest. Yeah. All right. Just give it up, Sea Vixen. There's no escape. Um. Dramatic music playing in the background. Yeah, dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's see. I think, you know, there's been you you're taking down our mass, so we're like, no, no, we can't, we can't let this go. We've got a uh. My most skilled fighters use ropes to swing aboard your vessel, incapacitating your gunners and disabling your cannons for a moment.
There's nowhere to run. I feel like you totally learned that from the pirates. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it's not a typical Navy move, but you were like, ha. They can do it. Uh... Let me know if I'm putting words into your mouth. No, 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 no that's cool. I'm, yeah. I'm just, that should I'm be just, there. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading my options here. Um, it's time to face justice. From the water, uh, from the water, uh, I also sent divers aboard. I also sent divers over. From the water, my people are able to sabotage your rudder, rendering it temporarily inoperable and greatly reducing your maneuverability. Right. <laughs> so. We each had two turns. Yeah. Is this a good ending, or do we keep going? I, I think we should go one more if that's if that's okay. No and 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 Andrea, if you want to, if you want yeah. Zill to be there, feel free to feel free to hop in. Yeah, I was thinking like, are we there? Are the mer people there? Because this is open host. This is open yeah. hostility. We're like right. we're like firing guns at each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so maybe maybe we should get one thing in before um, the mayor folk come in. I was going to say, you want the you want the mayor folk to hop in here? Yeah, I think so. I'm just uh, scanning scanning the options, um, and I think you rob both ships. Ooh, yeah, maybe. Maybe we do that because we're like, okay, we we don't have weapons like you have, but you're not like, there's so much stuff going on, like people falling and screaming and yelling and running around and shooting at each other and like drawing rapiers and whatnot. And I think some of the mer people climb aboard the ship and use the fighting as a distraction to steal several containers Which? of both of your cargo okay that works I'll both of your that. cargo that works um, that because works. we figure like at least we'll have something to use yeah. in future negotiations because you probably want it back mm -hmm. we've learned that about you yeah trade and barter yeah got it all right um i i, I yeah. think we need one i think we need maybe one more round to no problem yeah um, my first mate corners yours demanding that you surrender or they die I mean, I'm the first mate, so right. Ooh, I yeah. corner your first. Give it up, Sea Vixen. I don't want to end their life, but I will. <laughs> um, and I think one of my crew members cuts a rope securing cargo on the main deck, sending it crashing down into distracting spate. Yep. Yeah. But wait, I want to know if if the first mate surrenders or dies. I think the the cargo think, crashing I, down. I think the cargo. I think the cargo part. Yeah, yeah okay. I think the cargo. I, yeah, I think the cargo crashing down was 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 to was to distract yeah. that was to cause a distraction so that my first mate is able to get away. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, that makes sense. The merfolk. You got one yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I. I. Do we do anything else? I feel like. I feel like we don't. I feel like we like, okay, if you want to fight. Or yeah, because I feel like we don't have a ship and most of the options don't work super well mm -hmm. for the mer people. I suppose you could just pass if you you're like, hey, we yeah, I think, we stole I, I think what I'm we just wanted. gonna I think I'm just gonna pass and say, yeah, we we got what we wanted and there All will right. be. There will be talks later. All right. So, Mike, I think you get to pick I, the end. I get to pick the end. Um, <laughs> I think all my... What's that? I was looking at some of the options. I'm like, ah, that does not make narrative. Yeah, sense. yeah. Some some of these, some, yeah. Some of some of these don't really make a lot of make a lot of sense for the fiction that we've established. Yeah. Um. But like fleeing is even 
easier for you now, considering all the narrative damage to my ship. Yeah, exactly. The mast um, and the rudder. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna. I think I'm gonna say uh, we suffer losses too great and retreat before we lose anything more. And I think we're able to do that because you have us cornered, but we've damaged your rudder and your and your main mast. So even though we've been aside yep. yeah yeah I, I i think we're able to uh i, I think we're able to like maneuver or maneuver around you and um and a lot of your cargo has gone missing yeah yeah i think yeah i, th I think this is I, I i don't think there was i don't think there was a clear decisive winner here but we're uh you know we're 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 fleeing mm -hmm. yeah I think that's the. I think that's how we're going to end it. We we uh you know we. I think our sails are still more. I think our sails are still mostly intact. So we still have most of our maneuverability. You don't, but we took some, we took some serious. We took some serious cannon fire, and a bunch of our crew are badly injured from the sniper fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think once we. I think once we get away, the. I think the. I think your. Uh, I don't think we're keeping very. I think once it becomes clear, I think the members of your crew that had boarded, I think you, uh, I think you jump overboard and swim back to yeah. your ship. Yeah, we don't want to end up as your prisoners. No. Lawless. <clears throat> and um, sea dogs. And and you know, I think you were, uh, and you know, you were the first mate, so you you were aboard our. I think you were aboard our ship. So maybe there's maybe there's like one scene once we're trying once we're like starting to pull away. Um, where if this is okay with if this is okay with you Jolene I think there's I think there's one point like when the when the cargo crashes down that's when we were like coming about and are trying and are like trying to leave um so when the cargo crashed down and my first mate escapes um you know I think maybe it knocked you off your feet um you're getting up and you hear a click and feel something pressed against the back you hear a click oh. and something's pressed against the back of your head and um um and uh captain black says um i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you jump overboard and swim back to your ship but let's just know that i had that i had you at my mercy and then um and then the and, and then the and, and and then the pistol goes up yeah yeah you know, she like you know points it points it back at the air. Right. Okay. Yeah. If I may add, this isn't over. Yeah. Angela. If I may add to that, normally mm -hmm. we would assist you. Normally we assist humans that fall into the water, like far away from the coast, and sort of get them to land. But I feel like we're not. We're not doing that because we're like, why are you fighting? You promised friendship. I, I don't think it's Zale personally. It's just a Merfolk general, mm -hmm. and um, so I feel like you barely make it back. Yeah, mm -hmm. and maybe Plus I don't you're know busy if, you're, if you're injured so, like... by by some of the some of the cliffs or something. But uh, yeah, that was a close call. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Well. So I think we've got turn to pick a game. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think the I think the like what fell out of that one is I think most I think we've got a lot of in I think we've got a lot of injury damage and injuries, but I don't think we had a particularly large loss of life in that battle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I, I get to pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um let me Take a quick look at the nighttime swim because, but yeah, maybe maybe we do that now because yeah. I feel like maybe Zale wasn't personally involved in, in the battle mm -hmm. and doesn't knows there was there has been fighting but knows no. Uh, details about who we, who did what to whom exactly and yeah i feel like maybe we we did set up a time back at the tavern 
when we would meet for a swim. And I probably no do I notice some some sort of injury or something about you? Um, I think you notice some uh like light scarring. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff that's gonna heal up pretty easily, but it's still like fresh fresh wounds, flesh wounds yeah. really. As she shows up. The moon is high and bright off the clear blue waters and you know you can you know she's like clearly uh she was not the happiest when she showed up mm -hmm. but her face lights up seeing you yeah it's like all right this is making it all better yeah yeah and i mean i heard about the the battle and i'm not quite sure who was involved so maybe, at least at first, I'm a bit more reserved mm -hmm. than last time. But I still came because I still want to, yeah, I still want to figure out, like, can we trust you? Mm. Like, you humans in general, and yeah, but also, like, you the Navy, and maybe you as a person. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, but I feel like I'm less like from before. I was like very, like, what are boundaries? Mm -hmm. We want to yeah. make a connection, right? And now like, I'm like, hey, you like... just talked about making friends, but you had a yeah. big fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm more, I'm more reserved. Um, where do we meet? Uh, where is the little private lagoon that you yeah. say I should meet at? that we should meet yeah is it like a little private secluded lagoon yeah i think it's like a great view of the sky yeah the stars yeah it's it's very nice and it gets a really nice nice nighttime breeze mm -hmm. and i think you can sort of still hear uh sounds of the tavern maybe but like the general the, the, the yeah harbor the area hubbub. but uh yeah it's it's people don't usually stumble here it's exactly. you need to know that it's there and i told you i trusted you with this, with this place mm -hmm. okay um, um. So we each get to uh, choose three turns and ask each other a question. And in the end, uh, we decide how we feel as the encounter yeah. ends. And everybody can always ask for more details of the location and circumstances. Uh, does it say who starts? You go first. I go first. Yeah. True. Yeah. Um. So I think I'm just scanning the options. Um. I think I'm. I'm basically showing you like where I usually float and then I'm like, yeah, normally I'm with a farther out, but I think it works just as well if we're a bit closer to the shore, because I know that's where you feel better. But there is, uh, we should swim around this reef mm -hmm. because it's really beautiful and you can see all the stars and it's much, much quieter you hear more of the ocean and less of the of the land mm -hmm. and so but you seem uneasy as we swim near a sharp reef um maybe because it, it reminds you of the battle and but i attempt to take your hand and guide you around the hazards of the reef do you let me do that yes 
you know this area better than me. You you move through the water naturally. Yeah, I do. I do. You are more familiar with these waters than I am. So I ask you, where should we go? Do you leave me somewhere secluded or somewhere open? I think, I think it's kind of both. Like, like to one side, there really is the, the open, big ocean, endless and uh, dark and you can hear it. And, but at the same time, like there's this sort of enclosure, maybe it's even some sort of I don't I don't I don't think it's a beach, but maybe there are some um maybe there's like a like a rounded rock we can we can rest on and it probably has some some algae growing on it so it's a little bit slippery and you kind of have to uh sit down um but it's true, you you only see the stars above and you hear nothing of the land anymore. Um, I oh, I kind of want I want to go into the cave um where we're uh I think after we've we've looked at the stars for a while and I'm like, that's actually there's a cave. We have to dive in. but it's really beautiful and I want to show you. And so I feel like we we it, I think you you need to just dive below the surface for a bit and then but there is air in the cave, um. And the cave is filled with like beautiful, bioluminescent plants and creatures and. As we are in this cave. This illuminates something about you I hadn't noticed before. What is it? I think her eyes are like a bright green, similar to the bioluminescence, and it's yeah. really making them shine in the darkness. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I feel something in the water brush my leg. Startled, mm. I cling to you. Do you laugh at me or comfort me? Um, I think I think my first reaction is to laugh because oh yeah, it's because I'm used to these things. Yeah, I, feels... I, I don't think I want to specify exactly what it is. Um, like, but yeah, maybe maybe it is some kind of eel. Let's let's go with that. Um, but then, then I see that you're genuinely upset about this, and then I'm like. I feel like we should maybe get out of the water for a little bit and sit on this 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 little beach over there 
and because I feel like you're probably more I figure like you're more probably more comfortable on land and maybe then like but only once we're on land I, I think I explained to you what it was and there's these like midnight eels and when you put your face below the water you can see them shimmer and they're actually really beautiful but it can be scary if you're not used to them okay. do you appreciate the information is that actually no, comforting you, you yeah she you know with that she dips her face underwater to yeah view them. yeah And I think they are beautiful. Yeah. They're quite big though. Yeah. She so she reaches for a journal that she doesn't have. She wanted to start writing down about this, but it's not there. Yeah. Oh, right. I get to pick yeah, them. So I'm one. so involved in seeing. It's okay. It's it's okay. So... <laughs> um... But there's something, um, I feel like we're still like on the beach and maybe like playing a little bit with the water there. And something about me catches your eye. What is it? I think as a... The moonlight's shining, and you feel free to say no, but like mm -hmm. your your skin also has like sort of like a its own sort yeah. of bioluminescence glow to it. Yeah. And it's just like I've never noticed how incredible yeah. you all are. You are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking it's like a, it's like bioluminescent freckles, but all over my body. Mm. I think all right. a passing vessel on a spot us, and we hide in that sea cave until it passes. The quarters are tight, and your mouth is by my ear. What do you say? Ooh. <laughs> Oh, I probably say something very cheesy, and it's like, I mean, I didn't expect the stars to be beautiful because they always are, but I didn't expect you to be this beautiful. Ooh. All right. <laughs> And that we is... hear the gentle lapping of the water. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, the camera pans down yeah. under the water. To another eel swimming by. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. The swim so ended. we get to choose how uh, the player who went second. So you get to share how your character is feeling as we part ways. I'm going to be... And you have, have some options or you can... Uh, I'm going to be a little brat and choose the feeling of your devising. Oh. So it's my devising? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think... I think you're conflicted. I think you're conflicted because there definitely is a connection between us, but also I think you're supposed to, to kind of keep a distance and keep professional and you have a job to do and you can't be spending your time mm -hmm. like swimming with merfolk at night in bioluminescent caves and <laughs> having like romantic exchanges uh, yeah. His eels pass by, and I think that kind of makes you feel 
conflicted. Totally fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Captain Black. I miss you. Now you get to set, choose a game. So I'm I'm really torn. Um, I'm really, I, I I'm I'm I the player am really torn. Do I want to do a dance or do I want to do a duel? Oh, isn't a dance also a kind of duel? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I, the, the last time I played MFC Firebrands, yeah. uh, we had a dance. We had a dance that immediately led that immediately led to a duel being the next scene. Yeah. Um. Let's see. And um. I'm leaning toward dance just because uh, Captain Black and Zale have not really had a scene together. Yeah. And that would be a way to that would be a way to have like yeah. every everybody in that that and a dance you can have you can have everybody play. So I think I think I'm gonna go in I think I'm gonna go in that direction. Yeah, that, that works for me. Dance. And also we kind of danced together already, like yeah, at the very beginning, the last time I was, I was at the tavern. So yeah. So yeah, let's 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 do a dance. I think there's a dance. I think there's a um. So I think there's. So I think it's a. So you know, I think it's you know, some period of time has passed since the battle at sea. Um, you know, probably you know, probably more than a day and probably less than a month. Um. But yeah, it's 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 some period of time later, and uh, yeah, there's a, and yeah, I think it's at the um. You know, I think it's at the uh, I think it's at the larger of the taverns as there mm -hmm. is um yeah, this is like an open night and there's just you know, there's just a there's just a dance going on. Yeah. And I've I just want to let if it's okay, I'm gonna toss a little bit of fiction here and toss a little bit of extra fiction in here, and that is mm -hmm. um it's really terrible form for a fight to break out at a dance. Um, so this is the sort of thing where, you know, members of various factions can, inter you know, can and are kind of expected to interact with each other because um, yeah. that's just kind of like, you know, the kind of like the social norms here. This is like, you know, this is like neutral ground. Everyone's welcome. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, we've I'm got assuming... some, we've, so we got pirates, we got merfolk, we got we got we got Navy sailors. Everyone's everyone's participating. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to say, I, I I would like this to be like I, I would like this to be like you know everyone, uh, you know I I'd like this to be like open to, open to all players. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So do um, we? Um, I was I was about to to say I, I'm assuming we're all there, and um, so uh, yeah, I get I guess we get to say what we notice about each other or what we've heard about each other before <clears throat> yeah so what do we notice about each other um so i notice um so i notice that 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 sailor dominique you know you know that first make dominique is uh is is here and uh you know we've had uh we've had less less than pleasant uh tangles before uh but i'm, pl I'm planning to be on my best behavior Mm -hmm. I'm also noticed that there are a couple of merfolk here that are, uh, you know, in their in their land form, um, you know, including one who's, uh, who I think I've who I think I've seen a couple of times. Oh, and I recognize this is someone who I've danced with before at a, at a previous one of these events. Um, yeah. And would it be fair to say that I'm noticing that uh, that 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 Zale and Dominique are like obviously aware of each other's presence here? I think that's that's fair to yeah. notice. Yeah. Dominique, like in the beginning, are you? So I think like, I think are everybody... you doing the? I'm very pointedly keeping a distance, mm -hmm. or are you trying to? get close no matter so, what like, the uh, I think what everyone notices Dominique is like wearing her best outfit for this like her hair is done up pretty yeah. nice just like side 
curl over the shoulder. Low cut top decolletage on display. And um, she's trying so hard to be cool about this. <laughs> but it's just like, oh. mm. yeah. But I think you also notice, like, yeah, she's also distracted by the sea vixen. It's just like, I mean, who wouldn't be? And it's is it is it animosity or is there more? It's... Oh, and I forgot to say what uh, what what so, and uh, and yeah, Captain Black is she is she is wearing um I think she's wearing like her, I I think she's wearing her like captain's uniform um mm -hmm. you know yeah. again she's not not wearing you know like a uniform um but uh you know she's she's wearing she's wearing her you know she's wearing her captain's jacket she's wearing um you know she's wearing like you know like like a blue jacket with you know epaulets and um i think we're for for where a uh for where an actual navy captain would you know would like have you know would 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 have like would would have medals there I think she's just got a uh, she's got a couple of I, I think she's got like a big brooch that would normally mm -hmm. be for a just like you know, like just kind of, it's not gaudy but it's it's a large like golden golden jewel brooch where like if she were like yeah. actually a member of the military that'd be where like military medals would be but no this is just like a particularly a particularly pretty uh, like piece of jewelry that she's wearing there yeah all right yeah and i think i mean i have legs right now and uh i'm fascinated by leg wear like pants and but i like i don't like i don't like tight clothing i think i like clothing that is very loose and very flowy and i probably have some yeah some some flowy top and um that is, yeah, I think also like fairly low cut, but I feel like in an androgynous way. And um, I'm wearing these loose pants that are gathered at the waist. And do I wear shoes? Do merfolk wear shoes? Would it be interesting if they were wearing shoes mm -hmm. that were clearly like plundered from during that battle oh. <laughs> yeah like... yeah yes yes we're wearing plundered shoes um like plundered boots or whatever. yeah yeah exactly i need to go off camera for just a sec mm -hmm. uh my, some, someone just rang my doorbell I'll, I'll be right back yeah i'll think about shoes and boots uh during that time um, let's see like would it be more interesting? Maybe they're they're are they pirate boots or are they navy boots? I th I'm thinking, hmm. I think navy the navy is likelier to have been ca like carrying yeah true. like fancier type footwear true true. You have good boots. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I mean, pirates have good boots, but it's generally stolen from other people. True. Yeah, like you, you only get like when you get boots from pirates. Um, they did probably usually like vessels, third so hand if you're lucky, yeah. and third yeah. foot. Yeah. And uh, are you are like unsteady in the boots? Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like at the point? beginning I'm always a bit like I haven't quite gotten used to boots yet, but I like how they look and they're very shiny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because someone has has taught me how to take care of leather. I didn't know that before, because why would I? And, yeah. And uh, I'm I'm back. Sorry about that. That was um, someone someone campaigning for a political candidate. It's actually one yeah. that I'm planning to support. So yeah, but I said I was in the middle of something. So anyway, yeah, ready for election season. Cool. Yeah. So I'm wearing uh, navy boots, and yeah, I'm still getting used to the feel of boots, and it's always a bit uncomfortable at first. 
Yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, ask so, uh, like looking at the setup for this game, ask your chosen partner how the two of you came to be dancing together. Um, I'm going to say, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that uh, Captain Black is dancing with Zale to start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so how did we, uh, how did we come to be dancing together? Uh, I think I saw you come in, and I waved to you. I'm like, hello, and I think I'm like. Didn't we? We didn't we dance? Didn't we share dance the last time? We did indeed. Uh, would you like? We did indeed. Would you like to dance again? Yes, yes. I've been practicing. It's a little bit hard in water, but I tried. I'm I'm eager to see if it worked. Um, a a a, a very a very wide a very wide grin. Uh, like well, alrighty then. Um. <sighs> Um, you know, she, you know, she extends her arm and, uh, yeah. so conducting the dance, each, uh, take turns asking each other questions. Each of you gets to ask the other two questions, taking turns, and then the dance ends. Mm -hmm. Um, if other players have joined the dance, you each get to ask, you each get to ask, ask two questions in total, choosing which dancing partner for each, for each question. Mm -hmm. Take turns around, uh, take turns around the circle as figures of the dance bring you from partner to partner. Uh, the worst dancer asks the first question. Yeah. I think that's probably the person that doesn't have legs all the time. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And like, can we maybe handle this? Like there's a series of dances going on. I think so there's a series of dances. Yeah. There's we, a series of dances. Sort of seeing a montage of moments. Yeah, I think uh, there's a the series night. of different dances going on. And I think yeah. partners, I think this is the sort of thing where partners regularly change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and since there's only three players, it's, we... it says, "What do we? Why don't we say like each? Uh, each of us gets to ask. Um, since we only have three players, we're actually getting close to time. So this is probably going to mm -hmm. be the last. This is probably going to be the last game. Um, do we just want to say uh, to modify like each? Each of us gets to ask the. Each of us each gets to ask um, two questions of each of the. Mm -hmm. Each of the others. Does that sound good? Yeah. As in, like, everybody gets four questions total, then, or just ask one question per each other player. Um, why don't we? Why don't we want? Um, since there's three players, yeah. Why don't? We, yeah, I, I I was initially going to say four questions, but that, that might that might take a while. Yeah. Why don't we go with yeah. one? Let's why don't start we go with, with the basic as is, and then see how much time we have. That's just yeah, what I was going to suggest. Works. Okay, that works. Okay, so I guess I'm the worst uh, dancer, and um, I would like. Uh, I think it would make sense for there to be. Uh, do we have leading and following in this dance? I think. I think. Yeah. I think. I think this is a. Yeah. I think there's a lead. I think there's a lead and a follow in, yeah. in this yeah. in this first dance. Yeah. Perfect. My favorite. My favorite kind of dances. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I'm assuming. Do you lead or do I lead? Like in this think, first dance. I think I'm going to lead, mm -hmm. if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. So, okay. Um, I think, uh, since I just said I'm, I practiced, um, what, what do I actually do? Um yeah, I mean that's just that's just uh goodness, I can't decide too many options, too many good options. Um I feel like okay, we I feel like we dance and I feel like we're dancing, uh, we've been dancing for a little while and I've kind of gotten back into the into the movement. I'm actually remembering steps. And as the dance 
uh, progresses, you find yourself smiling. Why is that? Um, I find myself smiling because um, I'm 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 legitimate. I am legitimately enjoying myself. This is uh, this is fun. I'm dancing with uh, I'm, I'm dancing with a a friendly and attractive mare folk. Something that you don't normally expect that something I never really expected I'd be doing. Um, and um, this is a chance to actually legitimately relax and re like legitimately like kick back, have some fun. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, you know, I don't have the responsibilities of a ship. I'm not, you know, I don't have the responsibilities of leading a ship. I don't have the responsibilities of, you know, having to deal with the Navy here. Um, this is, I'm, I'm just doing this for fun and I'm, I'm legitimately enjoying myself. Um... I think I will ask a question of you, um, of you, Zale. Um, mm -hmm. Just looking at the questions here, there are so many good ones. Yeah. Something about me catches your eye and your look lingers. What is it and what kept you from turning away? Oh. I think... I think you you get this you get this look like you actually notice that I have practiced and I am less hesitant and it's I'm more easily follow your lead and I I recognize what moves you're leading me into and um I feel like at one point you're doing some one of these moves where you're like let's see if this works and it works and you get this like yes kind of but as a facial expression <laughs> and um i'm like oh that is attractive and yeah i kind of i, I think i think my reaction is to kind of to like this is that again so I love it. I'm not sure it works the second time, but yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if this is where we switch partners, actually. Um, or someone cuts in or there's a there's a change and maybe maybe we'll meet again uh later in the dance. And who's dancing with Dominique now? I think the sea vixen is dancing with Dominic yeah. now. And uh yeah. how do we how was that initial approach? As like we're you know, the dance requires that, you know, we're trading partners and it just happened timing wise. We just, we just timing wise, I mean maybe it's maybe it's one of those formal maybe it's one of those more formal dances where you know, partners are like doing I'm constantly trading. Yes. Yeah, and they're constantly trading and we just happen to and yes we just happen to be in the position to trade partners and we are now dancing together mm -hmm. all right something about me catches your eye and your look lingers what is it and what kept you from turning away um I think, I mean, you know, I, I mean, we obviously, we, we recognize, we recognize each other. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, um, I think what, now, you know, now that, you know, now that we're not like, you know, at odds at like, like immediately at odds with each, with each other or have like swords or pistols pointed at each other, I realize like how actually 
attractive Dominique is. And I think, I think, uh, you know, I think Captain Black is just kind of, I think she's just kind of like struck, you know, I think she's just like struck with your face and just like, you know, keeps looking, you know, and just kind of like, you know, keeps look, you know, just kind of keeps looking at you. Um, and, you know, you realize that, uh, you know, she's kind of like locking eyes with you. What? Um, and I think what? specific, I think specifically, I think specific, I think you established earlier that your eyes, your eyes were deep. Were, did you say green. in the, yeah. your eyes yeah. were deep green? That's unusual. And I think like the fact that you green. have green, I, I think that's a specific thing that first catches, catches, uh, yeah. Captain Black's eyes. Um, oh, and her, her eyes are, her eyes are very dark. She's got like, you know, very, very dark brown eyes. And I think she catch, I think she, I think first she catches glimpse that your eyes are green and she just can't, she just can't take her eyes off of them. Yeah. And I think like, as Dominique's like, I'm about to ask, what are you, what are you, what are you looking at? That's when the partner change happens. Ew. Leaving her very confused. Yeah. Right. Oh my god, that... are we now dancing together? Yeah, I mean, I'm the only other person you get to ask a question yeah. of. Yeah. True. True. Um. So, uh, who is leading? I always mm. want to know that. Um, you. Yeah, I think I am. And... I think Yeah, I think I I I I try to do I try to do a, a move not not the one that like Captain Black did because that is a little too advanced for me but uh, something something else I I saw and um i think um no i i can't find the option i wanted oh yeah and uh one of one of the movements is where i sort of draw you like really close because we're like doing a turn and mm -hmm. they just work better when you're really close and now you're close enough to whisper something into my ear what do you say to me? <laughs> Not a moment has gone by that I haven't thought about our swim together. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I'm like, how do Merfolk blush? Do we get like <laughs> Jack Green? <laughs> <laughs> And passed off again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's like just before I can answer this, like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's back. In black. I think it's back to me. Um, yep. mm -hmm. And I've already asked Zale a question, so I think uh, Captain Black and Dominique are dancing again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. man, you chose the. You, you chose you, uh, you know, and uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to repeat the, I'm, I'm going to repeat another, I'm, I'm going to repeat a question. Um, yeah. You are close, uh, Dominique. You are close enough to whisper in my ear. Do you? If so, what do you say? I don't understand you. You're a woman of honor. You've chosen this life oh. among the moral, morally bankrupt. What? Why? Why are you so vexing? Ooh. No. I think. I think to that question. Um, yeah. 
I think to that question, she just she just smiles and says, "You don't um, like." Um, I think I, I think she smiles and she says, um, "I don't think you fully understand what you know. I don't think you fully understand what we do." Because we are people of honor. All right. Nice. And now, question for Zale. Uh, yeah. Let's see. When the dance ends, do you oh. linger and talk to me? Ask me to dance again or take your leave? I think I ask it to dance again and okay. I the way I do that is I I think I sort of do it like a like a bow with a flourish uh, because I've seen humans do that and I really like that and um, then I say would you like to go for another swim on the dance floor with me Okay. I think, and I think, well, and, and I think, uh, like, I think the camera pulls back and we see the sea vixen, um, yeah. holding a, holding a glass, like, like sipping a glass of wine, like just watching that, watching that, uh, specifically watching the two of you, watching yeah. the two of you dance. And she just kind of subtly nods as if she real, as if she's, as if she has like come to some sort of realization. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Oh god! I think everyone has everyone asked yep. two questions. I was yeah. the yeah. I was the final. I was, the, was the final. Yeah. I was the final one. Okay. Yeah. Well, folks, we are yeah. uh, we are pretty much at time. Um, this was this was super fun. Um, like with a lot of these one shots, I really want like like with a lot of these one shots. The um, yeah. Uh, this, yeah. I love these games, but they're just constantly setting stuff up without any resolution. <laughs> Which yeah. is like why they're great aids for like other people's other games campaigns. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Firebrand's games, like like some of them has have some sort of ending game to to sort of wrap things up. And um but I'm also fine. Like, do we maybe want to do some some sort of epilogues Epilogue. at least yeah. to sort of? I was, this, I was thinking. Like, I, I give us some some closure. I, I I like that. I was rather than going straight yeah. into stars and wishes. I was going to yeah. say, do we do we want to do like like let's just kind of go around and do like a do like a little epilogue. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. I I I think that would be cool. Um, yeah. Anyone have an idea who would like to go first? I'm I'm still I'm still thinking about mine. I think so. An epilogue for Dominique is um. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a, a realization that like what she thought they were here to do versus what the captain's here to do. Like, there's, like, a conflict of, like, she's an idealist. And the captain has ulterior of the, na like, of the naval ship has less honorable intentions than she was originally led to believe. So she's yeah. seen in, like, a meeting with the sea vixen Ooh. of yeah. trying to, like, make an accord with her. Nice. Nice. I love it. Yeah. I think um play I think playing on that we see a there's a scene at sea um where 
you know Captain Black is at the you know is at the deck is is on the deck of um, the Flying Fox, and you know I think we. I think we come around uh, an island and we see the, in and like the intrepid is not far away at all. Like it's clear that it's the intrepid and um, you know, she orders a, uh, she orders a, she orders like one of, she, basically she orders like one of the, one of the flat, one of the signal flags to be raised. Um, and it's the, and it's the flag, which it's, it's the flag that says, you know, we have that basically says like, we have no quarrel with you. It's like it's like the, uh, I don't know. It's I don't I don't know semaphores or like signal flags, yeah. but it's it's you know it's like you know it's like the it's like the green triangular flag is 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 yeah. uh, is, is raised, which see, which signals like, yeah, we know you're we know you're there. We have you know we have no quarrel with you. And um, you know, and I think she uh, you know, and I think. You know, she's like looking. She's like looking through. She's like looking through the spyglass, and um, you know, she sees standing on the deck of the Intrepid is Dominique, also standing, uh, also looking, also looking right back, looking, looking through, looking through her own spyglass right back. Yeah. Oh, I kind of, I kind of want to add something shady about the Mer people, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and. You know, just as a teaser for the second season of this. Um, and I think... Like, I'm I'm trying to decide who is shadier, but probably the Navy captain. Like, not Dominique, but the Navy captain. And you see one of the merfolk. Not sure if it's Zale, probably. Yeah, I don't know, maybe Zale has been ordered by the Merfolk leader. And we're bringing some of the treasure to the Navy. And there's some deal going on. But yeah, I feel like we don't know what it is and... Maybe Zayla is unaware of this. Maybe Zayla is like, and then the camera sort of pans over to Zayla floating on the ocean, looking at the stars near the spot and also doing like accounting dance steps hmm. in their head. And yeah. Love it. Yeah, I think this will go very wrong in the second season. I have so many epilogues. <laughs> No, oh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah well this is well this is cool um i like to do i like to do a little stars and wishes debrief um however i i, I prefer stars and wishes to just be for us so um mm -hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna end the recording here if the two of you would like to stay on to do a little bit of to to do some stars and wishes um We've yeah, we've got a, got a few more minutes, but for those who are uh, for those who may be watching this video, um, thanks for watching. Uh, this was one this this was a game of one particular harbor um, by uh, by Megan Cross. Uh, it's available on itch, and I think they still have hard copies. I I think they still have hard copies available for sale. So definitely check it out. Um, it's it's a really fun game. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. Anyone want to have any? Anyone want to? Yeah. Anyone want to plug anything before I before I stop the recording? Uh, I'm not sure your audience is going to be interested in that, but uh, I mean, I, if you give the if you give me the opportunity, um, I have a publishing company called Plot Bunny Games, and we do some translations into German, but we also publish a lot of the original games in both German and English, like Viva la Queer Bar or Against the Monster or Bunny, we bought a dungeon and several others, and you can check them out uh, on on itch probably because that's where the English descriptions are. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to see what else is going on. And there's another Firebrands game, as I said. It's the English version hasn't gotten its second edition yet, but it will at some point. And uh, yeah, the first version is also already fun. And if you like this game system. And uh, I'll just yeah. I'll, I'll just also say that uh, I just I just played Viva La Queer Bar with some uh, with some like yeah. with, with my with, with one of my rare like in person in person groups and uh, we had a ball with it.
So yeah, thumbs up you. on that game. It was super fun. Yeah. I have nothing to plug. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, thanks for watching, folks, and uh, and happy gaming, everyone.